Well, if you're watching with children, uh, now is a great time to pause and go and watch the Sunday Rocks videos with them and uh, join in uh, with the artwork for them this week. Uh, for the rest of us, uh, we're going to affirm our belief in God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit in the words of the Apostles' Creed. So if you're able to, wherever you're watching us, would you please stand and let's say the words on the screen together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, in a few moments time, we're going to have our Bible reading. It comes from Acts chapter 9, it's verses 1 to the beginning of, chap of verse 19. And uh, Liz Yates is going to read this for us. Uh, and then after that, Liz Eden is going to speak to us. So let's have our Bible reading. The reading is from uh, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verses 1 to 19. The conversion of Saul. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men travelling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind, and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem, and he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and, the, and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptised, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. This is the word of the Lord. Well, good morning and uh, thank you for allowing me into your home again this morning. I hope that this finds you well. As the days tick by, I'm noticing more and more the things around me that are now getting pretty redundant. Things like uh, suitcases, uh, most of my wardrobe other than the most basic jeans and sweaters, uh, but perhaps most of all my diary. I am not looking at my diary very often. Uh, because, after all, I don't have any plans. I can't make any plans and I don't particularly want reminding of the plans I once had. So it's a bit like Groundhog Day here. You know, the only thing that seems to change is the advance of spring out there and that every day I have a little bit less garlic in my fridge. Uh, if you haven't been following my garlic saga, it's a long story. Um, 
on several different occasions, you know, over the last few weeks, I've had friends quote a particular saying to me, and it's this, if you want to make God laugh, tell him about your plans. Uh, it's a Jewish phrase and it captures that resigned good humour that comes from centuries of enduring upheaval. But one day, I suppose we will look back on this time and we'll be able to say, oh, that there was the turning point or that decision really changed everything. Uh, but for now, we can't be sure exactly how this will end or when we will turn that corner. Meanwhile, many around us are suffering. And for the rest of us, it seems the best thing that we can do is nothing. Our own plans remain on hold. And I think that Jewish saying is also acknowledging that God's plans for us often seem to come out of the blue, probably because we are usually so busy focusing on our own. So I think this could be an extraordinary time in our spiritual lives if we let it. Saul's dramatic vision and conversion on the road to Damascus is perhaps one of the most famous personal turning points in the scriptures and it's clear that absolutely nobody saw it coming not the chief priests who had commissioned him on his murderous journey not the men traveling with him not the church in damascus not the faithful ananias and most certainly and absolutely not saul who we later come to know as paul the apostle I notice that evangelists often talk about how God can and does bring about huge changes in people's lives. Uh, they love to use them as illustrations. People come to faith and they are changed. There's no doubt at all that Saul's plans changed on this day and at this moment. I think for us, though, perhaps uh, we think I don't want everything to change and I don't want to be a different person and I want to be me, I like my life. But this story really shows us that God doesn't want to change who you are. He wants to fulfil who you are. He wants to fulfil who you are and he wants to use who you are and he wants to bless who you are by giving you his purpose and direction and relationship. And the Saul who staggers into Damascus is still the same person he was in all the important ways. He is still passionate, energetic, results driven. He is still inquisitive and clever. He is still incredibly resourceful and determined. He is still the man who has a ready-made network of contacts all over the known world through the synagogues in every town of the Roman Empire. And these are all the reasons that the chief priests in Jerusalem chose him to go and root out Christianity, although it would be fairer to say that he went to them and demanded that they employ him. That's the sort of guy he is. But, you know, these are the same qualities that will allow him to plant Christianity wherever he goes on from here. And he goes and he goes. He is going to travel over 10,000 miles to spread the gospel and build the church at every stopping place. God picks people not because of their past, but because of their strengths and their gifts. The strengths and the gifts that he gave them and has always loved and celebrated in them. It's a story we read over and over again in scripture. And there's another factor as well, and that is that God has a habit of picking people for jobs they don't really want. An example here is Ananias being asked by God to go to the help of Saul, a known enemy and terrorizer of fellow Christians. It's almost like a little flashback to that story of Moses who hesitated to deliver the slaves from Egyptian bondage. Uh, here we have Ananias being told by God to go and to heal him and to feed him and to take him in and embrace him as a brother. Of course he knows Saul's reputation. He knows he was there when Stephen was murdered. He'll know that he's been granted authority to systematically eliminate the church in this strategic city before it can spread any further. He knows that Jesus told his people it was going to be this way. 
and that he warned them they will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. Little wonder then that Ananias had a but for God. It's extraordinary, I think, that he goes at all. I think if he'd heard it from the mouth of anyone but the Lord himself, he would have stayed at home. If you then follow Paul's story through the book of Acts, or if you read his letters to the churches that he's going to found, you get the impression of a man of the most enormous energy and action. But first, there is going to be something of a hiatus. Because the first thing that God does for this go-getter is to lock him down. He's blinded, he's completely helpless, he's reliant on the help of others for the littlest of things. Being stuck and helpless can be very challenging to our own self-worth because the world really values individual strength and it doesn't go much for vulnerability. I suspect Saul doesn't go much for it either up to this point, and it's a hard lesson for him to learn. Perhaps you are used to being active and useful, and you're having to take an unwanted rest. You may have nothing in the diary now, but you know, God also has plans, and he is bringing them about despite the shutdown and through the shutdown. So please remember that even Paul, one of the greatest men who ever lived, still didn't see it until it was right in front of his nose. Probably not many of us have come to faith as dramatically as he did, but we all have our own road to Damascus story. Sometimes we are just blinded by our own concerns. Sometimes we need to stop and give up our own agendas for a season and pray and listen and if we will allow it to receive. Because whatever our plans, God has a bigger one and he already knows your story better than you do. And that brings me to the very last verse of our extract this morning, verse 19 of chapter 9 in Acts. The thing Paul still needed was to be fed and get his strength back. Despite the fact he'd been healed and baptised, he'd received the Holy Spirit. You know, we often think, don't we, that uh, we put ourselves under a lot of spiritual pressure, thinking that we ought to be fine in every circumstance. But no, not in this case and not always in ours. He needed to take some time out. He needed to be fed and get his strength back. So in this meanwhile, in which we're living, how are you getting fed? There are some wonderful folks who have set up a food bank for the village. And God has also given us a food bank for our spiritual health, strength and restoration. It's there in his word and in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that connects everyone who loves and claims him. He wants to bring refreshment and restoration throughout this community even in the midst of these present challenges. Will you answer his call, let your sight be restored and see where your road will take you? I'd like to pray for you and I invite you to close your eyes wherever you are, have your hands open uh, to receive because I'm specifically going to ask God to bless us wherever we are this morning. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless you and I say, he has not forgotten you. He sees your needs, he is able to meet them according to his great riches. Let this be a season that we learn how to pray. Give us this day our daily bread. And in his name, I bless you that on a daily basis, you would discover things about God's character that can only be discovered in times of hardship and waiting and that you would carry those treasures for the rest of your life and that they will fill you with joy and trust in the Lord. In Jesus' name, I bless you that whatever responsibilities you are carrying, be it home or your work or your business, 
that God would provide in the most surprising ways in the days to come and that his peace would guard your heart and your mind in this time of leaning in to his grace and goodness. Amen.